Welcome to lecture 21 of ECE 4305 Software Defined Radio Systems and Analysis. In this lecture, we will look at a type of spectrum sensing technique referred to as cyclostationary detection. So whenever dealing with any sort of uh, uh, digital transmission or signaling waveform, um, there are often some sort of telltale signs of what type of signaling is going on in that transmission. Uh, for instance, uh, the frequency and temporal characteristics of a data transmission can tell us a lot about uh, what's going on at the transmitter and what the receiver is intending to pick up. For instance, uh, just looking at the activity of the wireless signal uh, over the air can tell us um, whether, let's say, if, if the traffic is rather bursty, um, the transmitter and receiver are essentially exchanging very short messages, while on the other hand, if the transmission is nearly continuous and has a very large bandwidth, we're probably dealing with something along the lines of a streaming content or a very significant file download. Um, but even the spectral characteristics of the waveform itself, uh, despite it being random, can, be some, can give away quite a bit of details of how the transmitter and receiver are designed. For instance, uh, we can, based on just the observations of the physical waveform itself, we can see things like what type of data rates are being employed? What type of modulation scheme is being used at the transmitter and receiver? The choice of carrier frequency, even location of the guard bands in order to mitigate interference. Sometimes, because even though the information is random, we can get some information, that the statistical information, if you will, of that random data um, that in, if we observe long enough, can form sort of these uh, period, uh, periodic features that we can extract using statistics and other sort of random process techniques. So one thing we, we might want to look at um, is something called cyclost cyclostationary um, uh, 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 signals. And so what is cyclostationary? Well, in a random process, uh, what stationary, stationarity is in general are some sort of predictable characteristics, uh, statistical characteristics of that random process. And a random process, as we saw before, is a random variable that has time varying properties, values, and characteristics, right? So stationarity uh, basically means that there's some sort of predictable or, or, or constant sort of traits that are contained within some or all of the statistical um, the nature of that random process. So there's something called strict sense stationary, stationarity, and what or SSS. And what SSS means is that the um, uh, probability density function um, of that random process is the same for all time instances, uh, especially if you have uh, joint. Uh, joint uh, probability density functions across multiple time instances of that random process. Um, we also have wide stand stationary or WSS random processes. Um, and WSS random processes uh, usually possess constant mean functions and their autocorrelation functions uh, possess the same value for the exact se temporal separation between two points on that random process. So, so we don't care too much about the absolute value of the autocorrelation function, time instance-wise, but rather the relative separation between two points on that random process. Now, cyclostationary is very powerful because in a cyclostationary random process, um, we look at two time instances on that random process and we hold it fixed and it should possess a value and what happens is if, let's say, we scan across the random pro the cyclostationary random process, that same time interval, um, after a period of time t naught, we should get the exact same value. And then 2 t naught, the exact same value. And 3 t naught, the exact same value. And in fact, what we notice is that the autocorrelation behavior has some sort of periodic uh, characteristic that's separated by t naught. And that's what we see in the equation here, that, for instance, the autocorrelation function of a random process x of t, which we describe as rxt tau, possesses the exact same value t naught seconds later, and that the mean function is constant. And what we can do is if we can express the autocorrelation function, because it's periodic, remember, we, we have something that's periodic, so, so we can represent a periodic signal using a Fourier series equivalent. So let's represent this periodic signal 
in terms of a Fourier series coefficients, r x alpha tau, and then e to the minus j two pi alpha t, um, essentially is the um, uh, the the, um, the 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 choice of frequency um, of that particular Fourier series coefficient, and we add this for all possible alpha. Alpha here we call the cyclic frequency. And what happens is we can take this periodic autocorrelation function and break it down into a collection of individual um, autocorrelation functions, which we call cyclic autocorrelation functions, or CAC, which we, we express here in equation two. And using the CAC, we can also find out what the spectral correlation function, or SCF, is by taking the Fourier transform of every CAC, which gives us equation three. Now using uh, the uh, SCF, let's normalize it, okay? If we normalize it such that we get a maximum value of one, what we get is something called the spectral coherence function, or SOF, which we have written here in, in equation four. And what the SOF tells me um, are essentially all the statistical uh, characteristics of the signal that we're picking up. And what we're going to see, and, and those are the periodic characteristics, and there are going to be some sort of telltale signs of what we're looking at, as we'll see in a few slides. So things like the choice of modulation scheme, like the type of roll-off factor that's being used by the pulse shaping filter, um, and, and other sort of, uh, sort of physical um, waveform characteristics of our transmission will all be sort of revealed in this sort of bispectral uh, a bifrequency spectral correlation function. And this is powerful stuff because even in the presence of multipath fading and noise and other impairments, this should come out very clearly. Those, those guys will, be, will not come out in the wash, but only these characteristics, which is much more accurate than let's say things like, um, um, uh, like a energy detection. And you don't need as much a priori information as say something like a match filtering approach. So the advantages of the cyclostationary detector are that you can do signal classification in addition to spectrum uh, sensing and detection. Uh, and, and at the same time, it's robust to some of the impairments induced, uh, introduced by the channel, such as multipath pr uh, propagation and white noise. So let's look at um, an example. I'm going to uh, sort of hand draw. So what I mean by um, the SOF. So what we saw was essentially the SOF, which is a normalized version of the SCF, which is the Fourier transform of the CAC, right? Um, the CAC is one frequency component of the cyclic frequency alpha of a bunch of CACs that represent that periodic autocorrelation function of the cyclostationary process. And then what we want to do is we want to look at for every alpha, every F, okay, every frequency component of that um, CAC in order to see how it looks like. And, and then the SOF normalizes from zero to one, how much, uh, like uh, the, 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 uh, that, that characteristic. So what you would have is something that would look like this. You would have, let's say that's your alpha. That is your F and suppose the vertical from zero to one, um, is your SOF, right? And what you'll see, okay, with some type of waveforms, is you might have like some sort of wall, if you will, that looks like this, right? And that represents, let's say, um, noise, the AWGN. And you'll see that in a lot of uh, SOF characteristics. So that's sort of a dead giveaway. Okay, uh, that's noise. Noise usually is um, one of those things that make things like the energy detectors and other types of uh, spectrum sensing uh, rather tricky because they kind of corrupt or increase uh, sort of the probabilities of misdetection and false alarm and such. But in, in, um, in a cyclostationary detector, oh, okay, we got this wall, now what? Now you might have, um, and I'll draw in another color, on the sides here, some useful information, okay? Uh, what we're looking for is something called artifacts. And so those artifacts could be something like, let's say, some characteristics. So if you see something that looks like that and like that, 
You might say, okay, uh, looking at the width and the shape and the number of these things, uh, this would be QPSK, and it would, ha it would have a roll raise root, uh, root raise cosine filter, pulse shaping filter of, uh, with roll-off factor of 0.2. And so this would be the type of information that you would be able to extract from a cyclostationary detector uh, that obtains uh, the SOF information. And this is, so this is really powerful stuff. This is purely without much or any a priori information. And uh, even in the presence of multipath and noise, uh, this is quite powerful stuff because um, you can look at sort of the periodics and the statistical nature of your signal in order to extract this information. Um, but the problem is, is that these things tend to be rather complicated to implement in, in real life.